Board members can be one of the most valuable assets to any nonprofit organization. Watch this video to find out how. For the past 36 years, I've served as a board member of numerous boards of directors, been president of many of those boards, and served as an advisor to boards. And one question I keep getting over and over is, what's the role of the board member in fundraising? Hi, I'm Jim Dempsey, and this channel is designed to help leaders of nonprofit organizations increase income and become fully funded. So whether you're a seasoned development expert, new to development, or somewhere in between, this video, this channel, is for you. There should never be a question in anyone's mind as to whether a board member should be involved in fundraising or development. The answer is yes. The fact is, if a board member does not want to be involved in development and fundraising to some level or another, they should not be a board member. In previous videos, I've mentioned that there are three components of development, public relations, recruitment, and fundraising. Without a doubt, a board member should be involved in at least one of those three components, if not all three. From a public relations standpoint, they should be able to be a representative for your organization to the community, to your audience, and to your donors. From a recruitment standpoint, they should help find the human resources that are the lifeblood of any nonprofit, volunteers, part-time employees, and full-time employees. And from the fundraising standpoint, they should do all they can to help raise money for the organization. There isn't a board member alive that can't call and thank donors for giving to the organization. Fewer may be able to introduce the organization to a colleague or friend, and even fewer may be able to ask for a gift on behalf of the organization. There are nine musts when it comes to a board member's involvement. They are as follows. Number one, a board member must know the responsibilities in fundraising and be trained to do them. Number two, a board member must be involved in the strategic planning and development planning process to establish ownership. Number three, a board member must set an example through their giving, not equal giving, but equal sacrifice. Number four, a board member must be an ambassador for the organization to their contacts, including potential donors. Number five, a board member must identify and cultivate prospective donors. Number six, a board member must be trained to solicit prospective donors alone with the executive director or with others. Number seven, a board member must take a leadership role in development and fundraising events and activities. Number eight, a board member must be able to motivate and direct others to do development and fundraising. Number nine, a board member must be able to thank donors in whatever way asked, but also on their own. A board member needs to be recruited for their willingness to be a life partner with the organization. That's labor, influence, finances, and expertise. Labor. A commitment of time is a very important commodity in this day and age, and finding a board member willing to give up a Saturday morning or a weeknight to attend a board meeting or organizational event is very valuable. And someone who's willing to labor in areas that will help you bring income into the organization is critical. Hosting a table and inviting friends to sit with them at the annual dinner, handing out treats for a walkathon, or making thank you calls are all ways a board member can bring labor to bear in with your organization. Influence. A board member should be recruited because they have some influence to bear in the community. They may be a prominent business owner. They may actively be involved in a service organization such as Rotary or Kiwanis or in a prominent leadership position in their church. All provides opportunity to influence the opinions of others and that influence can be brought to bear in sharing with others opportunities to be involved in the organization that they serve or ways that people can donate financially. Finances. Board members need to have a willingness to give financially to the organization and even better, an ability to give to the organization. The ability of board members to give varies greatly, but every board member should be giving something to the organization. They will be better board members for it and they can model giving to others. A gift from a board member helps encourage other board members to give, helps current prospective donors to give, and definitely motivates staff to use their abilities to ask others to give. Gifts by board members are often used as lead gifts when given before a fundraising campaign or effort. In addition, this is the first step towards a long-term goal of 100% board participation in giving. Again, not equal giving, not giving the same, but all giving something. Expertise. 
Board members should be recruited because they possess certain talents and skills that add value to the organization. They could be skills lacking in the staff. They could be skills that enhance an already skilled staff. I've seen board members help in areas such as financial management, strategic planning, fundraising, skills that enhance the organization are desired and should be proactively sought when recruiting board members. Board members need to enhance certain principles in development and fundraising. First, even though board members have a number of responsibilities related to governance of the organization, a basic understanding of development and fundraising is critical. Boards that have a firm financial footing are that way because board members are actively involved in raising funds and friends for the organization. They see themselves as key participants in the financial success or failure of the organization. Second, for nonprofits to succeed and become fully funded, board members must face the reality that they need to be committed to the organization's development plans, program, and scope of exercises, those activities that win, keep, and lift individuals to higher levels of involvement. Facing realities. Some serious questions must be asked of and by the board and leadership of the organization. They are as follows. Does the board's composition include a majority of directors with the ability, willingness, and commitment to give or acquire financial support? Are board members clear about their role in development and fundraising responsibilities? Is it clarified before the board member is given an offer to join the board or even better during the interview process? Do all board members make generous or even sacrificial gifts to the organization? Are most board members involved in seeking and soliciting gifts for the organization? Are board members thoroughly and carefully trained before going out to solicit funds for the organization? Is there a strong active board development committee that understands the organization's needs? And do board members grasp the goals and objectives of the organization and can they communicate those to potential donors? Does the board view development programs as, as a significant and integral part of the organization? Does the development director play an important role in decision making in the process of the organization? Are board members active participants in communicating the vision and opportunities of the organization? Are the board members clear about the executive director's role in fundraising? And is that role clarified at the time of hiring? Does the board evaluate the total development program annually? The active involvement and wholehearted embracement by board members of the development and fundraising efforts is vital. Board members must be leaders and activists in designing policies and strategies among development and fundraising programs. If you hope to ever move your fundraising efforts to the next level, become one of those organizations. You must have a board that is not only supportive of, but actively involved in all aspects of development and fundraising efforts. Don't be left behind because your board members will don't have a strong desire to come alongside and help with the fundraising responsibilities. Find those board members and put them to work now. The objective of this channel is to help you greatly increase income for your nonprofit organization. If you found this video helpful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you wish to watch future videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified immediately of the next release. Also, post a comment below if there were things that you especially liked or if there's videos you'd like to address. For videos similar to this, check out the video and playlist listed above. To watch other videos related to nonprofit fundraising, go to our channel, Development Effectiveness Strategies. And if you have fundraising questions in our weekly broadcast, Jim and Java is for you. Submit your questions on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And as always, I wish you the best as you increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.